Hey, what's going on? This is TJ with Blackfoot Mechanical. In light of the recent power grid issue that we've been having, I've decided to go ahead and uh, make a better way to hook up my generator or any kind of other auxiliary power source to my house. Uh, there's a number of ways to do this. Some people will just run extension cords into their house. Some people will run a, uh, a transfer switch and a transfer switch panel, or some people will just uh, go hillbilly and just back feed, which you don't want to do. And then the way I decided to do it is with a power inlet box and an interlock setup. So basically, this is the uh, inlet box right here, and it's a 50 amp uh, twist lock, uh, 240, 220, whatever you want to call it, volt uh, inlet box. And it's specifically meant for um, uh, bringing in power. So you can see it's got the two hots, neutral, and a ground on there. And it's just set up to mount up against the external exterior of your house. And then you run the generator cable right into it. But the way you hook it up to your house's electrical system is important. So the way I'm doing it is with an interlock. So this right here is my cable. It's some um, uh, six gauge wire. I got white, black, red, and green for all the different legs of the cable. I got some conduit, non-metallic, and the conduit fittings. It actually came in a little kit. So you get like six foot of conduit and two fittings rather than having to buy like 30 feet or 25 or however, whatever length I sell it in. I also bought wire by the foot too. I got about six feet each. It's way more than I need, but better to have extra. It was about a dollar a foot, I think. And then I got this 50 amp breaker here. And so the power is actually gonna feed through this 50 amp breaker to my panel. And what's the most important part is this here. This is a generator, forgive the dogs, they're mad. It's a generator uh, interlock switch. Now what this does is it keeps you from backfeeding the grid. You don't want to backfeed the grid and you know kill or injure a lineman that's working on the power lines trying to restore your power. And you also don't want your generator to be running and you to have a grid power come to a generator that can heavily damage your generator, cause a fire, it's really bad. So what this does is this locks out the uh, breakers so you can only have one or the other on. So it's important where you put the 50 amp breaker on your panel. So the 50 amp breaker goes normally where a load would go. And it, since it's a two pole, it's gonna go across both legs. So that's why you're gonna get your 240 volt and you're gonna get your um, uh, higher amperage. So um, you have to hook this, you have to put this breaker in a, a particular spot or else the interlock won't work. So we're gonna go over to the panel and we're gonna show you how that's done. So this here is the interlock I'm using. It's a GE100A from a Gen Interlock. And you gotta make sure that you use the right, that you order the right one. So what you do is it gives you a dimension between the main breaker and that first uh, load breaker there. And this one is an inch and three eighths. So when you're on there ordering, make sure that you measure and check first so you don't order the wrong one. This is the kit right here. It actually comes with everything. It comes with drill bit Loctite. It comes with the zip ties and the warning tags. So when you install those breakers, you put a zip tie around all of them and then you uh, put the warning tag on it, the do not remove, because that breaker location cannot change or else the interlock won't function. And you'll be able to um, uh, turn on the main breaker and the generator breaker, which you don't want to do. So that breaker for the generator has to remain in that same spot. So for this interlock to work, the generator breaker has to be right here. That's where they put the AC breaker. So we gotta move this AC breaker and land the generator breaker. So we'll actually put a bigger service loop in those wires. I'm not gonna shorten them just in case it needs to go back. So then we're gonna land this one here. There we go. 
So that's where the generator is going to come in through one of these knockouts on the bottom. And the wires, two of them, two hots, are going to land on each one pole of these breakers. One of them is going to go to the ground bar, bus bar, and then the other one's going to go to the neutral bus. So it's four wires coming in from that power in that box that we're going to install in a little bit. So I got the interlock installed right here. Oh, there we go. Basically it bolts to the panel and it just slides back and forth. And what that does is it keeps you from activating this breaker while your generator breaker is on and vice versa. While your main breaker is off, your generator breaker can be on. Uh, and when your main breaker is on, your generator breaker has to be off. So it's, it's always one or the other. And that's so you don't backfeed the grid or you don't send grid power to your generator and blow it up. All right, so we have this interlock plate installed and it's basically a plate that just slides back and forth. You drill three holes in the panel and then there's a backer plate and then this sliding plate and then these uh, three bolts or their screws and then there's a shoulder nut. And so the shoulder nut bottoms out against the backer plate, leaving room for the breaker to, or the interlock to slide back and forth. Now the purpose of this is so that you cannot have either of these breakers on at the same time. This is the main breaker coming from your utility, and this will be the breaker that the generator feeds. We got the warning sticker on there, generator breaker. But right now, the main breaker is on, generator breaker is off. So to turn the generator breaker on, I first have to shut the main breaker off, slide the plate over, generator breaker is on. And if I wanna go the opposite direction, go back onto grid power, I turn my generator breaker off, slide the plate, main breaker on. But right now I can't have these two on at the same time. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna install the power inlet box. So let's look at this here. Power inlet box, that's where the twist lock comes into. It's gonna run a piece of conduit up here into the panel and it's gonna feed that breaker that we installed on that interlock switch. So I'm gonna mount this real quickly and then we'll go and run the conduit and the cables, land all the cables and stuff. So we're all done with that install. There's the power inlet box, conduit, water tight up to the panel. So it's kind of messy. I haven't had a chance to redo everything. This was here before, but here are my two hots going to the breaker right here and here. And then right here is my ground landed right there. See my neutral service loop in there. That lands on the neutral bar, which is right there. We have our breaker warning label, and then we have a zip tie around all those breakers right there that has the do not remove. 
label right there because that breaker cannot go in any other position or else the interlock won't work. Now we have the uh, finished product right here. So right now the main breaker is on and the generator breaker is off. Now if we wanted to switch that, we'd have to turn the main breaker off, slide the plate, generator breaker on. And now we can't slide over now. So to go the other way, generator breaker off, main breaker on. That's how we're going to leave it because we got grid power right now. And then it goes down to the box. And that's where you plug in your generator. All right, so there we have it. The uh, generator interlock, the generator breaker, and everything is installed down to our power inlet box. Now, some of the uh, disadvantages of this is that you're basically powering your entire panel. So if your generator is not big enough or if you um, have a lot of heavy loads, same thing really, but you can overload your generator potentially if you put more load on it than it can put out. So you have to be in charge of managing your own loads. Now for me, the only high load electrical thing I have is my dryer and then my air conditioning also. But both of those, um, I think the dryer is about 4,000 watts and the AC is about 6,000 watts. And I have, a, I have a 12 kilowatt generator but in an emergency situation, I'm probably not going to be running my electrical dryer. But when that does happen, we'll flip off the dryer breaker just so you can't overload it. Everything else in my house is gas. So I think the 12 kilowatt generator is going to be more than enough to run everything on there. And then you're also limited by the 50 amp breaker, the 50 amp box, and the 50 amp wiring. So at 240 volts, 50 amps, I'll be able to flow about 11, 11 kilowatts max, or yeah, 11 kilowatts max. So yeah, that's it. But uh, I also just got my generator, so I'm probably gonna do a video on that. And uh, we'll test everything out, run the house off the generator. Thanks for watching.